everybody it's Sherry and we're going to use the La La Land flower Frenchie stamp set today and we are going to do some ink smushing which I I love how it turned out I was really happy I mean I could have used a water brush but I don't I like the fact that you get a more random look if you do the smushing than if you just use your you know your brush to paint some color on so we're going to do that here in a little bit and I'm just coloring up my little dog and I, re I know that those little dogs, their ears have like little divots or, you know, peaks and valleys. I don't know how to explain a dog's ears, but <laughs> they are different. And so we're going to go with that. And so that's why I'm putting those little lines in there so that I can get what would be, what would look like a peak and a valley. And I'm not real thrilled with how I do that last line right there. So I come in with my colorless blender and I'm going to try to fix it because I feel like I made it too straight and I, it didn't work. And maybe because I didn't even give a chance for the colorless blender to dry would probably be the reason. So if you're going to try to do something and remove your color, use your colorless blender to remove some ink, give it a second to dry. We might all be surprised at how much better it works. I don't know what, I don't know what I was thinking, guys. I've been working my butt off trying to get my room, craft room organized and cleaned and sorted through and just, I just need to downsize. And so I've been busting my butt trying to do that. And so I think it's like, I don't know, maybe there was too much dust when I dusted and it's like affected my brain because I don't seem to be thinking real clear here lately. I don't know what I'm doing. And if I don't pick places much quicker and get my room sorted out soon, my daughter's probably going to pop my head off because she's the one who has to help me. And here I'm just going back and I'm putting a shadow where the flowered stem would make. And I use my darkest. Then I go over it with my mid-tone and come out a little farther. And then the same thing with my lightest so that I can blend it into the rest of the little dog's face. Because you don't want it to just abruptly stop. You need to make sure that you blend it in. And I I left quite a bit of the coloring in here and I hope you all don't get bored with me because I I like these images and I don't know who designed them, but there's another one that's called Cows It Going that they just released not too long ago and I think they're both drawn by the same artist because they I don't know they both have a lot of similar features and I like and I like it in that she's left big spaces for us to color and add our own detail if we want you know I could have given this dog spots I could have done all different kinds of things with them and now I'm just going back over because I didn't like after it dried I thought it was too light so I'm just going to go back over everything and do it just the way I did before just hopefully darken it up a little putting the shadow in where his head would be casting a shadow onto the insides of his ears and then just using my lightest collar to go over everything and now I'm going to start on his little bitty legs and I end up using four colors and I didn't realize that's what I had done but I do I use W5 W3, W1, and W0. And what it was is I wanted the lighter color of the 0, but I couldn't make it blend well going from the 3 to the 0. So I throw in the 1, and that makes it a lot easier for me to blend. And I don't have this like blotchy spot or something. I don't know exactly what you'd call it, but it did not, it just didn't look right. So when I added the extra color, you know the W1 then everything just you know spread like butter it was a piece of cake from there and I'm giving him some little lines in his face to kind of give him some kind of facial expression and stuff and so that he just looks like he's going, ah, I don't understand you know <laughs> like I didn't just rip this flower out of your garden kind of thing but the flower was really cute and it was a fun thing to color and it was super simple there was no there's this image was like a no pressure image there's just there's no way you can mess it up you can make your dog any way you want it to be so you know if you don't have this this image i will link it in the description box below so that maybe you can go and get it from the not too shabby shop if you'd like now here i'm just using my black glaze pen 
This is different than a black gel pen. This leaves it, it'll look like it's wet, but it's not. It's just shiny after it dries. But you have to give it time to dry. You can't add something on top of it until it's been, it's had a few seconds to dry. So here I am, I'm just putting in my shadows so that he looks like he's sitting somewhere and he looks a little grounded and he's not like he's floating in air. And I'm going to use my Stampin' Up! round um, circle dies to cut him out and I do partial die cutting and this is like I think the first time I've ever done partial die cutting. I do not include it in the video because I was over to the side using my electronic uh, cutter but and here's the white that goes in it goes on milky but it dries nice and white but um if you want to see how i did it you know let me know and i will pull my big shot out and over here so that i can show you what i did and here's just my memento dual tip marker to go over the part that was cut out from around the circle i don't want to go over the circle just the parts that i you know his little ear and stuff that's sticking out now here's where we're going to start with the smushing and see, if you're going to do this and you're going to spray water like I did, guys, clear everything out of the way so that you don't make the mistake that I did because I had a mess, an absolute mess. And so I'm just moving in with my next color, and that is Strathmore Bristol Smooth Paper. I love that paper, and I can tell you that my craft room will never, ever be without that paper. See, look, I'm making a mess. And that was clear over on my keyboard. So if he got wet, you can imagine what my keyboard looked like. <laughs> and, uh, but so I'm just finishing up. I'm going in Roy G. Biv order. So I've got my red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. And I'm just wiping off my acetate with a towel that I keep on my desk. And you'll see on the paper, it says, or on the acetate, it says smushing. I just figure I would keep one for it because I really had fun with this and I wanted to make sure that, you know, I didn't use it in my in my STD because I didn't want to risk transferring ink. So, you know, if I didn't get it cleaned well enough or whatever. So I didn't want to risk stamping on it in my STD and then messing up a card. So this way I know what that one's for and then I know my clear one is for my stamp transfer device that my hubby made me and so there I'm just finishing up putting in a little bit more collar to I didn't want any white spots and I felt like some of the colors just weren't quite bright enough so I needed some more red I needed some more orange and some more green and I wish I had put in more blue but I still like it I just think that it, when I do it again I will make sure that if I'm going to use blue I think I'll pick something a little darker so it stands out a little better. And I'm just using my heat gun there to dry it up and make sure I got it ready. And I'm going to trim it down to four by five and a quarter. And I'm just trying to figure out how I want to lay all this stuff together. And I'm real careful about how I cut the two short sides because I don't want to cut off a bunch of the red and then leave a bunch of purple. So I try to center it the best I can and, you know, spread out so that it's equal on both sides and here's my memento london fog ink and i'm stamping off on a paper over to the side before i stamp onto my background piece and i always make sure that i go off the edges so you're seeing there where i'm stamping off the edges i want to make sure that it looks like it's a complete piece and not something that I just stamped. You want to make sure that you get all of it, all of it's covered, not just the inside part, you know, so this will make it look, you know, more finished. So there's that and it's real light and I love it. I love how it turned out. I just think it's like a little hidden surprise, I think, that, you know, I didn't want it to be like in your face, but I still want it to be like something that when you see, you're like, oh, I didn't notice that before. And it's kind of makes you smile kind of thing. So here's four and a quarter by five and a half yellow piece that I attached to my 110 pound recollection cardstock base. And I'm just trimming down some fun foam to go on the back. Now, guys, I have gotten fun foam from the Dollar Tree and I have gotten it from the craft stores. The one at the Dollar Tree is much thinner 
but you know you do whatever you want and how you want your cards to be but I wanted mine a little thicker than that so I get mine at the craft store now and I'm just figuring out where I wanted to put my little dog and I get him all ready and make try to make sure I got my sentiment straight and I go ahead and put him down in the middle and there he is I think he's just so cute and I love that partial die cutting I wish I had done it before I really think it adds a lot to the card now I'm just going to use the mini Frenchie stamp set that La La Land also came out with to stamp the inside of my card and the envelope and I do not stamp off on this one because I want it to be a little more bold and a little brighter so guys I hope you like this video if you do give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below letting me know what you think thanks for visiting me today and happy crafting bye